Hello. It's uh, finally happened. My first collaboration. And it's with uh, Gur from Dark Matter Workshop. All the way over in Belgium. Uh, I'm going to give him a quick call just to see what we're doing. The number you dialed is not in service. Yeah? Hey! Hey, Gert. How are you? Mm, no pleasantries. Fine. Oh, you want us to uh, collaborate, yeah? Are you nodding your head? Yeah. Make uh, miniatures, a miniature warband. Yeah. Out of what we have lying around. Yeah. No kit bashing. Yeah. No 3D printing. Yeah. How are you? Are you good? Yeah. Been watching the football. Yeah. Do you like food? Yeah. You ever watched a film before? Yeah. If I was to offer world peace, what, what would your answer be? Yeah. If you were to answer a question in the affirmative, what would you say? Yeah. What's the opposite of no? Yeah. You're a man of many words, aren't you, Gerd? Yeah. Will you ever speak to me again after this collaboration? No. Hello! Thank you for watching. Uh, today I'm going to be making a 28mm war band with uh, a Dando's twist and for, for that I'm going to need some Super Sculpey Firm and preferably a cube of Super Sculpey Firm that will melt over time and uh, I'll pi just peel that off the cutting mat very satisfyingly. That was a strange way to start the video. Anyway, this is a 28mm soldier guy uh, for reference walking on screen here. And I'm going to... Uh, one. Hello? What are you doing, mate? Uh, we represent the offices of Bill Making Stuff. Uh, I think you know what you're doing, lad. I suggest you stop it right now before we rinse you for every penny you've got. Is there such a thing as a homage anymore? Don't mess with the bill making stuff, people. That's if you learn anything today. Uh, anyway, uh, I've never sculpted anything this small, so I'm going to start with this little lump of clay here. Um, hold it up against the guy, and it's about the right height. Got to make sure it's around that height there. Now, 28 millimeter is the measurement from the eye to the ground. Apparently, I googled this. Uh, you probably already knew this, uh, but I didn't before the start of this video. Now those of you that are uh, familiar with this channel, I tend to have a predilection towards the horror. So this is going to be a horror warband. Cosmic horror, body horror, I'm not sure, somewhere in between, but I'm going for like a maggot flatworm looking thing here. And that's where the dental tools are perfect for a, for a sculpt this small. Take out your pointy rubbery silicone thingy and attach a few slivers of uh, clay. There's gonna be a lot of very thin slivers. But I found that if you're very gentle and delicate with it, it's not too bad. I mean, to be honest, I was dreading it, but I actually really enjoyed this. And I feel like after making 28 millimeter scale miniatures, I can approach larger projects much more confidently. That and I had a haircut. So, you know, I'm just uh, on top of the world right now, strutting my stuff. I've attached two slivers for lips and now I need to make lots of tiny teeth using Fimo uh, Translucent. 
white clay. And this was the bane of my very existence. There was a lot of teeth involved in this project. Looks good. Takes a hell of a while. I rolled tooth after tooth. Now, the, a little thing I learned uh, was to roll a point on each end of the sliver. And that's two teeth there. See? See what I'm, what I'm thinking here? Yeah, see the logic? Did this over and over again, gave them a bake, and then got out in the old art shiv and uh, cut as much of the point off as I needed. I really should change that blade. It's looking a bit blunt and dirty. Anyway, it was enough to cut these teeth, roll them, rather than press down, they will fly off and you'll never see these teeth again because they are tiny. Then you will need to get out your teeny tiny ball stick and make some holes in the gums because trying to press these tiny teeth in without some kind of hole is nigh on impossible. They are very fragile, but they won't be by the end. If you, you'll find out by the end of the video. This is future Dan saying they're fine at the end. This is the first and only time I tried to fix these teeth with my fingers. It was uh, tweezers from then on. Used a Sculpey Bacon Bond to affix the teeth. Ten teeth per flatworm slash minion creature thing. And uh, any spares we feed to Molar to appease the Tooth God. As I'm sure you know. Molar appeased, thank god. Going to use three balls of clay, two small ones, one medium sized one. The two small ones are going to be used for eye sockets and I'm going to place the large one at the very point of the flatworm minion thing. And then I'm going to get out my trusty set of ball bearings to get some tiny little eyeballs ready for this creature. We're going to go for the teeny tiny ball bearings and look at them. Ah, oh, aren't they cute? Those tiny little ball. Anything that's tiny is cute. I mean, if Hitler fit in your pocket, would we would we hate him as much? That's a terrible example. Yes, we would still hate him. He's still a very bad man, just very small. Back to the sculpt. Press the eyes in the little sockets there, and using a slightly larger tooth to attach to the the lump at the top there as some kind of spike. I imagine it would headbutt with. It's time for a channel classic now. A bit of floral wire. Or I think it's Christmas wire sometimes. I think this is a good time of year to go out and get yourself some of this. Uh, it's, it's great stuff. Very, very thin wire. But it's coated in a, a plastic so it's easier to paint. I'm folding a short length of it uh, in half and then twisting it. And I'm going to use this to make... Uh, I don't know if you could hear that. That's me twisting virtually in my hands. It's probably not very professional. I'm going to use this to make a tentacle. After drilling a hole and using the cheapest superglue known to humankind, I'm going to attach it to its forehead, I suppose. I suppose that's the forehead. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking that wire looks far too flimsy, Dan. Uh, well, firstly, it's uh, Mr. Does to you. And secondly, it will be fine in the end. As George Michael once said, I'm never going to dance again. No, uh, faith. you got to have faith. I uh, went digging into my tooth box and pulled a long tooth. And I'm using this as a claw at the end of the tentacle. Pressing that into the lump of clay at the end there. With, affixed with Super Scoppy Bacon Bond. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here. I'm also using this, uh, the Bacon Bond to coat the wire. To fill in the gaps and to give it a much more organic texture when it's done. Uh, this is the great thing about Bacon Bond is you can do a lot of textures with this and you can fill a lot of gaps. I suppose it's the beta, the the polymer clay equivalent of green stuff or liquid green stuff. And now a message for the patrons. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Thank You Patrons. Tonight's special guests are Ed Trot. Gemma Ingram, Jake Langford, Carl Buckley, Miranda Stone, and Shy Talk. Featuring 
Andy Scott, Anthony Roberts, Benedict Mueller, Brando B, Cathal Grant, Chris Gilliard, Demon Mittenhands, 4 for 5, 5 4, Gad Gervins, Gout Harasser, Carl Deakin, Krista, Larry, Mary Peterson, Mike Pitt, Positive Puppet, Rabies of Lard, Rich Miles, and Stuart Asher. Also, the musical stylings of the Doers Tear Band. I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our patrons tonight. Enjoy the show. The quota for this collab with Giet from Dark Matter Workshop was to make uh, three minions or soldiers, a, a second in command and a boss. So this is the minion, which means you have two more builds to come you lucky lucky people uh, but I, I will be doing more of an overview of the the next two builds since uh, most of the process will be the same especially the painting process which is what you're watching right now thank you for watching so with the standard base coat of black and then a, a very light overbrush of white just so I can see the details I'm adding some orange brown to, uh, for a base coat skin color it's going to be very fleshy looking, very fleshy, very sort of gory looking. Um, we're going for horror, people. Uh, my miniature painting skills aren't up to scratch. They're not, uh, they're by far not the best on YouTube. But I, I am trying and I want to learn. I want to be better. Uh, but this thing turned out okay. Using dark flesh tone on the red parts and then adding... Uh, red on top of that. It's just a lot of mixing, a lot of wet blending. I'm not going to talk you through each step because you can literally see each step. So the stomach of this creature is uh, sort of like an open sore, I suppose. It's red, bloody, gory, whereas the outside is flesh. And that's pretty much the theme for the, the, the rest of the builds in this project. I'm going for a very simple base. Uh, it's going to be uh, flat brown covered in sand a few rocks and a few yellow tufts of grass uh, these things are in the desert for some reason I don't know why but I picture having an open saw looking belly like that in the desert would be very uncomfortable I mean sand gets everywhere but these things don't care I mean they're hard as nails at least that's the law that's the law Let's we'll work on that. We'll, 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 that's the starting point. The law will will grow. You may be thinking, what was in that pipette? Well, it was isopropyl alcohol, just so I could uh, let the glue flow into all the gaps and make sure none of that pesky sand comes loose. And the rocks I'm using are cork. I'm using another channel favourite, UV resin, on the red parts to make them look truly sore and wet. And as if by magic. Two more of this guy's friends appear. That's a lot easier than building them, I can tell you. If you examine them closely, you can see that they're all slightly different from each other. To keep it interesting, uh, those are the minions. On to the second in command. Off we go. Get these out of the way. Now, you often hear of sculptors looking at a lump of clay and then envisioning the end product. So we're going to give that a go now. I've got nothing. Going to wing it, I suppose. Using the cavity stabber, as per usual, very sharp. Start folding some creases into this, rolling the tool across it to get the, uh, the lovely creases there on such a small scale. What a marvellous tool. And, uh, and I'm not really sure, to be honest. <clears throat> How are you? What, what, what have you been up to? Yeah? Get the trusty ball bearings out. I'm going to pick two slightly larger ones uh, and give it some eyes. And uh, ta-da! We have a tiny owl. It won't look like an owl at the end. I hope not. I mean, do owls have shoulders? I don't think they do. This thing does. 
Maybe they do have shoulders, just they're hidden under the wings. I've added a little lump to its rear end and a few slivers on the underside. There we've got ourselves a happy little fella. Hello there. Look at you. Smiling and dancing. It's not really what we're going for. We're going for horror. So we will need to transform you horrifically. Enjoy happiness while you can, little fella. Getting out the steel wire that I purchased from Wilco. I don't I think that's just a British shop. I'm not sure if that's worldwide. But it's just standard steel wire. I'm gonna use this to make legs. Two very long legs coming out of what look like shoulders, but they're not shoulders, they're hips, I suppose. After bending the wire to shape, stick it in the hip joints with a bit of super glue and then blend those hip joints in with the leg with a bit more clay and there's its long old legs check out the games that's something oldie people used to say gams are legs apparently when did they stop calling legs gams it was at this point that I started adding a few more folds and creases and the occasional skin flap as you do just to give it a bit more detail and uh, then time to add a, a couple of extremities i.e tentacles but this one's going to be a bit fatter this is a i'm using two different gauges of wire and twisting them together one of them's a steel wire and the other is just a bit of armature wire that's a lot softer twisting that and then going to attach that to the creature's butthole am i allowed to say butthole i've already done it in this one take voiceover. I also attached three uh, spines along its back using the teeth. Now you might be saying to yourself, why is Dan using the translucent clay for spikes and then painting them? Well, you know, I did consider that, uh, but the Fimo is quite flexible. I'm covering the legs and the tentacle with uh, Bacon Bond, just to give it a bit of lumpy texture and to blend it in with the clay. Here comes a little ball of translucent clay. That's production value that is. Now I'm going to need four small uh, balls, like so. And then I'm going to need two uh, pincer claws and then uh, two hooves. I'm going to try out hooves. Uh, I give the underside of those hooves a little sand on the emery board just to make sure they're nice and flat. And then after drilling a hole, slot them onto the legs blend them in with a bit of clay, then uh, add the pincers. They're attached to the big, the big fat tentacle. And uh, once they're attached, add a couple of extra little flailing tentacles, exactly the same as the ones that were on the minions. It's gonna be a running theme here. And uh, once that's done, you don't need to watch me paint this thing because it's pretty much the same uh, routine the same system as it was for the Minion. So we're going to show it primed, show it slap chopped is the, the phrase the kids are throwing about these days, which is slapping it with a bit of white. I think I'm not, I'm not too hip. And there he is painted to match the Minions. Uh, lots of fleshy tones, lots of reds, yellow eyes. And uh, what I could really do with is a second heavy. Perfect. Uh, right, where'd you come from? Is this live? Well, technically it's Dando's bedroom, but I suppose you can consider it live. Not that much life happens in this room, if you know what I mean. I was nothing, and now I am something. Yeah, well that's, uh, that seems it's a bit heavy for this, you know, for this early in the day. I mean, it took me hours to be made, but you just seem to appear. You're lucky bastard. We are the same. Well, now, don't, I don't know about that. We are friends. Steady on, mate. Well, I've got enough friends. I imagine being friends to you would be like teaching an old person how to use a PC for the first time. I have warm feeling in my belly. Is this love? Oh, here we go again, Gerald. Why do you have to be so goddamn good looking? No, it's not love, fella. Uh, what are you feeling? It's probably hunger. You've just you just appeared out of nowhere. You probably need something to eat. I'm pretty sure it's love. Oh, 
God damn it, this, this face is a curse. I'll take, look mate, right, I'm not interested. My tentacle feels funny. Right, that's me out. Good luck with the rest of your life and uh, learning and all that. See you later mate, Jesus Christ. Are you on Twitter or something? So, when it came to uh, making a boss, I didn't have any ideas. So I took my little drawing tablet to work at the sweet shop and uh, sketched this thing. Um, wasn't really sure what, what I was going for, but I knew that I wanted some kind of cloak made out of skin and uh, some kind of collar, just to make the creature look a bit more grandiose, a bit, bit more um, important than the others. I started with the head, which is uh, kind of like a big brain looking thing. Now the way to make uh, proper bulbous lumps on the head is you need to take a, a ball stick, uh, press a little indentation, then roll a ball of clay and uh, attach that ball of clay to the indentation there. If you're just going to take a bit of ball of clay and press it straight onto flat clay, it doesn't have the same look. This is something I learned. And uh, when that head was done, I added a slot for the very top of the creature's mouth. Next, I uh, took some wire, stuck it into the brain, right into the uh, cerebral cortex there, uh, and used that as an armature for the body, which was covered in bacon bond and then wrapped in clay. Now, this is the all of these techniques are going to be very familiar to you, so I think I may just sort of let this thing play. Uh, maybe we can have a chat. I mean, uh, uh, I hope you're enjoying the video and uh, I hope you're well. Uh, and if you are enjoying the video, then why not hit that like? I mean, it, it, it doesn't really mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. Just click that like button there or the subscribe. You could even subscribe and then just ignore all of my videos because uh, it really would make my day. Is this enough begging for you? But wait, there's more. If you are enjoying the video and you enjoy this channel and um, you would like for this channel to continue, uh, then please do consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as three pounds a month. And uh, it would mean the, oh God, it would mean the world to me. But I know things are tough. So really just, just you watching is enough. But you know, you don't ask, you don't get. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, back to the video. That's that bit done. I won't. I won't ask again in this video. Now this boss, because it is the boss, will have more teeth than all of them put together. So I need to make lots and lots of teeth. Cutting all the teeth with the arc shears just as before, rolling rather than pressing. You don't want those tiny teeth flying off. And this was a long process that uh, you, you don't need to partake in via the magic of the medium of editing. I'm um, pointing to the inner layer of teeth. I'll be, I'll be needing to add more teeth later on. Time to add the fleshy skirt. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Gert from Dark Matter Workshop for approaching me with the suggestion of this collaboration. Thank you very much, Gert. Look forward to seeing your video. Um, hope all is well. How are things in German land? If that's where you're from. I mean, it's always been a bit sketchy. We're never quite sure. And those of you that aren't aware of Dark Matter Workshop, please do go have a look at his channel. He was a big inspiration for me at, at the beginning. Not anymore, not now that I know him. If anything, um, our frequent uh, video calls are demoralizing. Uh, but before you get to know the guy, he's a very good crafter. This, of course, was a joke. Is that what you wanted me to say, Gert? Time to add more teeth and more teeth. Pressing the holes with the, the teeny tiny ball stick and then slotting those 
teeny tiny annoying teeth into each of the holes of a bit of a bacon bond. Uh, do this over and over again, sort of hoping that it looks good in the end. This is future Dan. It looks all right. I'm quite happy with it. A lot of work, but it is the boss. So it has to be special. Oh, I wasted my life. Now, um, I'm not serious. I don't, I'm not actually this miserable. This is all part of an act. I'm hoping you all know that. And if you didn't, you do now. I'm pretending to be miserable because that's just what English humour is. You pretend to be miserable when sarcastic and just a bit glum and uh, the rest of the world finds it funny, or at least some of them do. Ah. Now I'm going to make the bottom of the skirt uh, sort of fan out like a, an octopus. Um, not the not tentacles, but you know the, the bit where the tentacles meet the big disgusting head of an octopus. That's what I'm going for here. And if there are any octopi watching, I do apologise. I'm sure you look at us and think, God, that's, that's revolting, that thing there. And uh, to be honest, people should not be showing you those things at the Sea Life Centre. Now, I had an idea with this creature to have a kind of false head, which is what I'm going to do with this tiny bit of wire. I'm, I've drilled a hole and I'm going to attach this to the front of the brain. And it's going to have facial features, but it's not the real face. It's like a distraction. I don't know what the point of it is, but it looks all right. And uh, the actual face of this creature, well, there is no face, but the eyes will be on the end of its tentacles, as you'll see in a bit. I've also added a little pointy tongue coming out of the mouth there, but that was made with cos clay because it's, uh, I need that to be flexible. We don't want that snapping. Um, by the way, I want to establish law for this, these creatures and this, this warband and potentially an army one day, maybe. And I'm going to leave uh, a lot of that to my patrons. So if um, I haven't got names for these things yet, so if you if you would like to name these things, come on over to the patron. And if you are a patron, then I would love your opinions and uh, any any name suggestions you might have. And it's done. That's the uh, that's the the boss. And if you'd like to see it painted, well, I'm going to do the showcase in a second, and uh, you can see it there with all of these friends or its friends, or her friends. I mean, we don't know yet. I'm assuming they're sexless. I mean, who would, honestly? There you go, there you go. Uh, uh, there's, there's the warband. Um, horror warband. Body horror. Um, cosmic horror. Somewhere in the middle. Cosmic body horror. 
A few people have said it's body horror, a few people have said it's cosmic horror. I'm just going to say horror. Horror Warband, ready for Stargrave and many, many games, I'm sure. Um, I, I potentially may make an army of these, which would be a lot of work and would take a long time. Uh, but I really would like to get establish some kind of law for this army. Um, and, well, firstly, names. And uh, my patrons, if you could help me out, I'd be ever so grateful. We can start a little discussion over there on the Discord. Uh, and if you'd like to become a patron and support me making these videos, uh, the link's in the info there. Thank you, and thank you in advance. Or, I understand. In advance. A uh, big thank you to Gert for reaching out. I'll never hear from that guy again. <laughs> <laughs>